Ian Brody, you used to be the chief of staff to the prime minister, right. Stephen Harper. Now you're a professor. You're doing sociology, though. Isn't that the dark arts? Uh, well, I, I'm, yes, I'm in the sociology department, and everyone's very friendly. Well, that's a very uh, neutral thing to say. Uh, I follow you on Twitter because I, I, you, you're sparing with your remarks, but they're cutting. What's your chief criticism of Justin Trudeau seven months in uh, to his prime ministership? I think we're going to need to see the beef at some point. No, no, please. I don't want to see the beef. Oh, sorry. I thought, you know what? When, when most journalists and commentators say that about Justin Trudeau, they're talking about something R-rated. <laughs> sorry. Can you rephrase that? They're going to have to say uh, no to somebody at some point. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yes, I think we're going to have to see some policy decisions at some point and get the uh, financial situation under control. And uh, now, Why should they do that? Why don't they just keep racking up the deficit and the debt? Uh, literally, what is stopping them? <clears throat> Nothing's going to stop them for the next four years. Well, so, so there you have it. You've answered your own question. Yes, but it upsets me as a taxpayer. Okay, so you're upset about it. Of course, yes, it upsets me as a taxpayer to see cash going out with that. I don't think much of a plan for value for any of that money. Well, but that is the plan in itself, isn't it? I hope there's more to it than that. Well, but, but you see, what I have started to realize about Justin Trudeau, and more importantly about the de facto Prime Minister, Gerald Butts, is that what you and I as conservatives regard as a scandal or a fiasco or a danger let's call that a bug, they regard it as a feature. So massive deficits, expanding the taker class at the expense of the maker class, radicalizing people along racial lines, gender lines, transsexual lines, aboriginal lines, all these things that you and I see as a problem, they regard as a success or a political weapon to put the conservatives on the back foot. What you've described, you know, overspending without limit, they don't see that as a problem. That, that's, a, that's a win for them. No, look, I mean, I there's, you, you put your finger on a serious point here, joking aside, is that we're going to have uh, f four years of spending without without limit, and spending without, I don't think, much of what you and I would think of as a, as a plan for some kind of success. No, no, I'm going to disagree with you again. The, the plan is reward the base. Public sector unions, uh, Montreal, uh, Toronto, Ottawa, Vancouver, take from the producers, the makers, Saskatchewan, Alberta, give to the takers, that's, that is a plan. You, when you say that it's in disarray or there's no plan, I think you are not giving enough credit to a diabolical plan. Uh, Ezra, let me put it this way. If we can't get resources moving to market, if we can't get people building some kind of manufacturing here or some kind of private sector job creation here, you're right. In a fantasy land, you can take from the, the makers and give to the takers for for a hundred years and not run out of cash. But you and I know that in the real world at a certain point, we gotta sell something to someone. We gotta have job creators at some point in this country to make that game work. Well, my counterpoint to you is the word Ontario. Gerald Butts was a principal secretary of Dalton McGuinty. Here we are, uh, many years down the road. Not only have they racked up the largest debt of any non-country jurisdiction in the world, but voters love it and there have not problems. Taxes are high, but who cares? Taxes can be high, but if you don't pay taxes at all, who cares? Taxes are high, but if you're on the sunshine list working for the government, who cares? So I, I put to you that every lesson that Team Trudeau has learned says the opposite of what you just said. You can go on, maybe not for 50 years, then you become Detroit, but they're Detroitifying Ontario, and they'll do so to Alberta and Harvey. They hate Alberta. Well, this is fair. This is why I'm here, because in Ontario, Someone has let them get away with that for the last 15 years. Well, who's had someone other than 10 million voters? Someone's let them get away with that because there wasn't another political party that was strong enough to be able to push them out. Okay, well, tell me you don't support the carbon tax plan of Patrick Brown. I don't, I, I don't support carbon taxes of any kind. Okay, good. You know what? you got to ask these days, a Tory, if he supports a carbon tax because I see Mark Cameron and... Uh, you know, uh, his uh, green schemes here in Preston Manning and his green schemes. you got to check these days okay. if you're talking to a green Tory. Right. I'm not for putting taxes on working people who have to get to work, and I'm not in favor of putting taxes on people who are trying to make their businesses. And you're exhaling 40,000 parts per million CO2, by the way. Well, don't tax that. You're not going to tax my breath, are you? <laughs> All right. So, so what's the plan? I mean, um, how is this party going to win? I think the, look, the, 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 the formula here is simple. 
When conservatives make it a dispute about personalities, we lose. When we make it a dispute about a conservative policy platform, we have an excellent chance of winning. And if we have the idea that we're going to out, out pretty boy the other guy or we're going to out selfie the other guy, that's a losing game for us. Okay, we, no conservative ever wins that way. All right. I uh, interviewed my old friend Jason Kenney yesterday, and uh, he was noncommittal about putting his hat in the ring. In fact, he said very favorable things about Ron Ambrose. The, the two are not necessarily mutually exclusive, but I am putting my mind towards what happens in this leadership if Jason Kenney does not run. I'm not disparaging the other candidates. I'm just saying I'm trying to visualize another candidate running in 2019 and winning. Can you help me with that? I think who, whoever it is will, will, will ask the question, for all of your taxes that have gone up, for all of the money that we have borrowed, are you getting a better deal out of Ottawa than you were when that guy was elected? And I think 51% of Canadians will say yes. I don't think 51% of Canadians are going to be able to say that honestly. Well, 39% was enough to get Trudeau the win last time. Right. So we're going to, can we get to 42% on that message? I think you can get to 42% on that. All right, last word. If there's one thing you're worried about this party doing, policy-wise, uh, if there's one problem it should avoid, what would that be? I think any idea that we're going to accept a high tax jurisdiction is a terrible idea, no matter what area of taxes that is. And the idea that you build a conservative coalition by starting in some mushy center and building to the right is always a recipe for disaster. If you don't have conservatives on side for a conservative party, there's no way you can put together the winning coalition. Ian Brody, thanks for talking to us today. It's a good to talk to you, Ezra. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.